Hey coach, welcome. I'm glad you found us on YouTube. Let me know how I can help you. I've coached for 30 years, won a lot of championships. You can see behind Coach MBA guys. I am here to help. I started teachhoops.com to help coaches just like you through this great journey we call basketball coaching. It's got more resources and I think the best part is our community and our resources that we have. You'll get my personal email address. We can get on a phone call. Teachhoops.com is the answer for your coaching journey. Let me let me know how I can help you and enjoy the video. All right, so let's go. Let's jump into the practice stuff, Coach. I'd love to talk sure. about that. So let's uh, let's have you share the screen here and All right. we'll jump into practice. Let's talk. Let's do that. Let's do the first one that you were talking about. That PowerPoint. Let's just go through real quick. You know, kind of your your summary of practice. Then maybe we can talk about a practice. Yep. All right. Let me. Um, you want the summary of the? You want the summary? Yeah. Let's do that one first. Let's do that one first. All right. Um, you know, I just, I showed this a couple times out to, you know, some people and I think it's yep. important, you know, you, you just got to have a plan of like, um, when you're running your practice at practice planning, yep. you know, I think there's important things to have. And I think you got like, first of all, you got to be really organized. Um, you know, I think you got to meet with your staff and go over, you know, your plans each day. And if you don't have a staff, just make sure you have a plan. And if how much time like, do you spend on a practice plan? And I probably, you know, it's, it's, you know, I've been doing this for 25 years now. So yeah. I probably spend a half an hour um you know what I mean when I was younger I probably spent a little bit when I was first doing my first job at Salem State there I probably did an hour an hour and a half but yeah you know I I sent it to my coaches after because they're all teachers so I sent it to them and they look it over give me a couple things I go back edit it and say oh yeah I should have added that in good point so I think that's important to do I think you have to have that I think it has to be right and then I, I show it to the players like when I get there I post it so they see it what's going to go on today so I put right. it up in the locker room when we get there so they can see what the kind of like the practice is and, and is there a specific time that you do it like especially now being a high school coach do you yeah um we usually have practices like our kids go to school until 250 and okay. then they take a bus over to our we have a, like a 10 million dollar practice facility it's really nice three okay. courts beautiful it's beckerman center okay. Dave beckerman, who started the starter corporation of the bass you know the jacket starter yep yep he had a lot of money he used to be the coach here for 20 years and okay he built, he built this facility called the beckerman center so the kids leave the school like 250 and they come over to the beckerman center and um then i do study hall from three to four and i just okay. have them stay in a room and you know like you know kind of like the uh, lunch room there and they just okay. read, you know do some study hall but then that's why i show the practice plan to have it put up and then we go on the court every day to, from four to six okay so four to okay. six is that time and that gives the time for the teachers who teach my coach assistants to get there and yeah yeah like that's the hard practice. part i know and then do you do you do your practice plan for the next day that night or do you wait till the no next i kind of do it the next you know next morning and you yeah. know talk about it then i send it to them an email and the email will be back or sometimes i'll do it at night depends on how we, how it really goes i used to do it at night but i like to dwell on it i think i dream about it to be honest <laughs> with you i mean because it's like oh that didn't go well and do you tape yeah. your practices um we i started doing that but then i realized <laughs> to be honest with you i'm the only one watching them and like going over it and i kind of i'm like because it used to be like in college like you know we have the other assistants the kids the right. players and the high school level is like it's me, me. It's, I'm like it's the I'm exact same coach. Again, i'm like and to get managers to help out to do it like that i'd rather have the manager running the clock than running the film up yeah. top. and you know so it's kind of like i got away from it um i did start doing that but i like I got, I, you know, you got to get one of the automated recorder things like VR. Yeah, I know. Those are expensive. They, they are expensive. That. Yeah. It is. That. And they, and they, and they do just, do that? I do. No. We just got one about a year or two ago. Um, and it's really nice. It's like, and the thing is what I'll do is I won't watch the whole practice, but it's like, I'll, I'll be home, I'll eat dinner. And then I'll start thinking about like, Oh crud, we didn't do that very well. So let me go, I'll go back and watch that drill. It would right. be me, it, and you're right. It's 97% probably me and one of my assistants. But yeah, yeah. Um, so. I just like it from that standpoint. Or, oh, wow, we did really well. Remember that one thing we were working on? Let's go back and look at that. What was that doing? That's right. where it's nice to have it. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah I, it's, it's not like I'm throwing the ball or kicking anything at him. There's nothing on there that's going to get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah I'm not, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about that I like I have all my practice open to my parents I, I encourage every parent to come to every practice and where do your parent that. where do your kids tend to be local yeah um they all within a um they're all within a half an hour distance because it's a day school only they don't have no uh oh computer. okay 
Okay. Yeah, so it's all, you know, they, I mean, it's, there's no uh, overnight kids, so it's all commuting. So okay, it's all parents commuting, coming so. to pick them up. And I just always thought, like, a parent's there. Like, why are they sitting in the car waiting? I said, please, just come in and watch the last yeah. half an hour. Get you, if I want, I want to watch my kid play ball for a little while. So right. honest, I, <laughs> I have my kids' parents come in all the time and sit in stands. I just tell them, make sure they don't go crazy, you know, and be loud. Right. You know? <laughs> don't so, yell at them, yeah. But, okay, uh, let's keep going. Know, I, and, you know, then I, I talk about like having, a, making sure my staff all have a firm, firm understanding of the plays and the drills that we're okay. going to cover. I think yep. that's more cool. like a lot of times I, I shouldn't be the only one who knows what the drill is about. So that's right. why I send it to the coaches early and say, Hey, if you don't know the drill, let me know and we'll go over it. Right. I don't want, you know, oh, when you come in early, you know, like we'll talk about it during study hall. So you kind of understand because right. I might like have to do something. They have to run it. I don't want to be embarrassed by, you know, my staff not knowing. Right. And it shows that everybody's on the same page. Yep. Um, yep. I think that's important. Okay. Um, I think the warm ups are important. Like nowadays, the kids, back in our day, you know, used to be right over left, you know, like right. I'm across, I'm yeah. across. All right, let's go play ball. Right. You know, like, Today, I think you got to give the kids a little bit more dynamic work warm up. They used to like some plyometrics, so I'm having a routine, and that's one thing we did when I was uh, at the end of my years at Quinnipiac. We had the um, the Navy SEALs come in and do a SEAL training program. Oh my gosh! And it was a three day program, and I'll tell you, it was an unbelievable accountability and leadership. And uh, if anybody could have a chance to have a part of that or watch that on film or whatever, you really should because it's if you're a coach, it just they just talk about leadership and the dynamics of it and one of their big things was the warm-up and how they have one leader and he would you know he'd say oh you know uh, all right you know knees to chest half court and back ready and then the whole group in a line would have to say ready and then he say attack and then they said they say attack and it looked just so good they were all on the same page the leader stepped up told them what the drill was they all went out and they went to half court and they came back and then the leader get up and he say all right you know next one butt kicks ready and they all yell ready and they, if you, you as a coach you gotta if the one kid wasn't saying ready you went down there and you ripped into him because you got to be part of the you know the group right you on the leader and uh you know i was all about that and i'll tell you like the kids loved it you know like as, as you know like they did this eight minute dynamic warm-ups you know like ply you know uh, you know um, all the different ones and uh it was great you know i think the kids really enjoyed it so i think that's important and i said i think uh you know running the clock is important if you have a clock in your gym yeah. you should have that because and keep the drills short you know like too many coaches i go watch a lot of practices and they'll be like all right nine minutes of this and the kids are like after minute two they're like you know done no so here's what i tell people when i go out and talk uh, too it's like we live in a snapchat world people tiktoks the longest a tiktok is is a minute and most of them are 15 seconds so yeah. if you think you're keeping their attention for nine to ten minutes yeah you're not <laughs> that's that, that that's all that UB Brown practice stuff. Yeah. I you know, I love watching I I watch UB Brown a couple times. Anybody get a chance to watch UB Brown on uh, talking about practice? He is phenomenal. Like I'm okay. talking like off the charts. Like he says, make sure you come in with a cue card, make sure every drill is three to five minutes. He's he's uh he's right he's right on point. I love um, that. I do. Hubie's got some great stuff. I agree. Oh my god, he's like man, talk about a genius in basketball back in the day. Um, you know, and then, you know, obviously I think you, you have your practices start early, you know, like a, a longer early in the year and then taper them down to make sure to taper it down. Yeah. And then, um, you you're know, down to an hour 15 and in, is that total an hour 15 at the and very end film? Um, that is cut when they came in and, you know, at the end of my practice late February, like, yeah. Cause you know, I hate to say it, but I'd only play like probably eight, nine guys. I didn't want to get them hurt. So okay. I, you know, I thought an hour, an hour and 15 minutes was good enough. And we, okay. you know, we, we keep it simple and we go through it. And, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I started early on, it would be two, two and a half hours, but then by the end, it's an hour and 15. And I'll tell you right now, when I was at Quinnipiac, same thing, hour and 15, hour and a half at the most in late February at Holy Cross, Ralph Willard, hour and 15, hour and a half. So a lot of the division one guys doing the same thing. They taper it down. It was three hours to start. And by the end, they were doing an hour, 15, an hour and a half. I love so, that. I do that too. I love that. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, you got to know that practice is where you create new winning culture, you know, so I think you have to have accountability for all segments, um, winners and losers, as much as you can do winners. Kids love that. I mean, I don't care what drill you're doing. If you can get a winners and losers, kids love busting on their teammates. That was the fun part yes, of like, when yeah. I played. Yeah, like, yo, get on the line. You know what I mean? Leaders got you. And then, you know, like. It doesn't you, matter. You know, from from someone that's done this a long time, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Like, no, it really doesn't. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And, and the thing is, sometimes it depends on the se part of the season, too. Early in the season, you might run. Late in the season, you might do five burpees. Exactly. I'll do, I'll do, I'll do, 
like if they're doing a contest versus another player, I'll say you have to do five burpees and you have to say three nice things about the person you beat or, yeah, yeah, yeah. or beat, you know, oh, or that they lost to, you know, <laughs> and it's like, you have nice hair, you know, like whatever, <laughs> but it's just like, they'll laugh and then they're doing it, but they're, they don't want to do that. Like, right, right. You know, so it's kind you of a losing thing. Yeah. 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 I, I tell you, so I think that's a huge thing. And, um, I said, I think I push in your effort stats. Like I'm a big believer when we were at Holy Cross, we did this thing called effort stats. I could show and you. What are, what so you called. talked about that before we came on the air. Like, give me uh, some examples of effort stats. Um, let me see if I can, I can pull, pull it up right. Okay. I have right here. Yeah. Let me see. Can you, can yeah, you I see can see that. that. I can see that. that yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. So now like what we would do is um, when I was at Holy Cross, one of the big things, the effort stats were huge. And they would, we would break down a game film at the end of the game. So what we do is we take this right here, this form, and it would say, all right, we'd watch the first segment of the game, first, uh, okay. first play of the game. And I'd be like, okay, here we go. First shot goes up. Stop, pause. Did Gio block out? No, Gio didn't block out. He got a zero. All right, did Danny block out? He did. He'll rewind it. Wait a minute. Yeah, uh, he did. He checked the kid. He got a, he got a one. He, all, all the way down to the five guys in the game, if they had a chance to block out, did they or didn't they? And then it would be a zero that. one. Okay. And then you go to the next possession where there was a ball loose or a ball got, you know, got away. That's a ball pursuit. If you ever saw that while you're breaking down the film and you saw a ball being loose or whatever, did your guy pursue it? Or did he kind of just let someone else go get it? And how many of those do you – how many ball pursuits do you see in a game? That, you know, I'll tell you, you be, when you start looking for them, there's a lot more than you can – because you could say to a kid, you could have went for that, but you didn't. And, like, no one else would pick up on it. But when you're watching it in film, you see two guys standing beside each other, and then one kid reacted to it, and the other kid kind of just stood. And, you know, and then when he saw the other kid went for it, he just kind of got in a defensive stance. So that would be a zero for ball pursuit. That's a, I think that's a huge I, – I mean, I've heard of some of the – that's a huge – I think if you do that early in the season, oh. that can be the difference between winning and losing. Without a doubt. You know, that's, oh. you know, that's diving on loose balls, the right. ball suits, that's, right. you know, all that. And then the shot contest, we, we talked about – like Ralph did this study when he was with Brick um, in, the, uh, in the NBA about balls, uh, ball side shot contest. He used to talk about a shot contest in the middle of the face – it doesn't really affect the shot as much. But when you do a ball side shot contest, right where the shooter's hand is and going right. on the ball side, the kid has to usually move his hand just a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left. And that affects his shooting percentage at least 10%. So are you talking same side hand? Same like, side hand. Because ball. I'm telling you, I just read an article, I don't know, somewhere halfway through it. Like if it's a right-handed shooter and you close out with your left hand, it drops like 15%. It's crazy. Like, yeah. It is something in the last couple of years we've really started to work on. The stats doesn't lie about it. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, like ball side. Just making sure, like, my thing was just making sure he's on the ball side. Whatever hand you get up there, yep. just get it on that ball side. So the kid has to think about moving the ball a little bit and angling his arm. Oh, a little. Um, so we used, to, we used to chart that zero, one, zero, right. one. And I'll tell you, that would even get kids who normally just, you know, there's a lot of kids who just run out there and close out, don't even put their hand up. You know what I mean? Right. Like, right. You know? So if you charted that, you know, and then you'll see at the end what happens. And then, then the only thing you do on the offensive end is offensive rebounding attempts. So, like, when we go now to the offensive side, I'd be like, right. all right, don't worry about the oh, – when the shot goes up, did you go? Did Gio go for an offensive rebound? Did Danny go for an offensive rebound? And if one of them had offensive responsibility – I mean, defensive responsibility, like the top guy getting back, right. did he get back? Did he say, I got back, I got back? If he didn't, he got a zero. If he did, he gets a one. You know, right, because you don't necessarily want to crash five at all times. No, but no, we, we always crash four. Okay. Okay. And and that when we were at Holy when I was at a, um at Quinnipiac, we crashed four. And I'll tell you right now, we were the number one rebounding team in the country in 2013 and 14, and we were no, the number one offensive rebounding team in the country for seven straight years at Quinnipiac over Duke, Kentucky, Michigan. And, I mean, it's unbelievable because you're charting it. Whatever you yeah. chart, they're gonna do. Whatever you exactly. Chart, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and then we did char the charges, and obviously, if you had a chance to take it, you didn't. If you did it, okay, you got one. Yeah. Um, deflections were always huge. We try to get forty or higher deflections. And what you don't do zeros for deflections. You just do one. No, no, no. Just if you got one. Okay. Um, you know, because it's tough to do a zero. So yep. just deflections. And we always say, but forty is our number. You have to reach. If you don't get forty, we run. You know what I mean? So okay. like kids with hands are, and Ralph was always about keeping your hands up. He said hands down, like 
you know, like you don't get a chance to get a ball deflection. Yeah. Hands down, man that. down, man. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. You know, all that. So I was big, uh, I'm a big believer in hands up on deflections. Um, and then closeouts and rotations, I added in. We didn't chart that when I was Holy Cross, but I added that when I was at um, Salem State because I just – And what do you mean by closeout rotations? Whether they – whether the ball gets skipped and you can get a closeout? Yeah, like you can tell in a defensive possession, like when a ball gets skipped, did your man do a horrible closeout? You know what I mean? Did okay. he just sprint out there to get blue by him? Right. All right, well, that's a zero. You know what I mean? Right. But if yeah. he, he shuffled his feet, he controlled the guy, and he still got beat, I'd give him a one because he – you know, he did right. a good close up, but a kid scored. That's a hard thing for a high school kid to do effectively. Oh. Is that second rotate? It's the burn by is like, oh my god! It's like, yeah, exactly. they, they have no. I don't know if it's because of like newborn newborn giraffe and they don't know how their bodies work. But geez, it's like you're running out there like your house is on fire. They're gonna go around you, like exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and then we do the rotations where we basically, if you're two passes away, where are you at the dotted line? The old, you know, in the center line, like hand on a line, seeing both mall and man, and that's a zero one. So, but, you know, then we, you know, we put all this together. And at the end, like, you know, I'm looking at it, like Geo, I did for one for Geo. He was 23 for 39. At okay. He had 58%. And our goal is if you don't, if you're 70 below, you run a sprint in practice to start the practice below 70%. Okay. So right now, Geo would start practice with 12 sprints. You know what I mean? So he'd go and just go, he'd see his effort stats and he'd be like, I got to go do 12 sprints timed. They all have to be timed. You know what I mean? Right. And you know, he would do it. So now he's pissed off. Cause he's like, man, I got below 70. Like, you know what I mean? And then at the end, if we didn't get 40 deflections as a team, we'd have to run as a team for those 40 deflections. And what and percentage of those players usually got above 70? And do you do 70 for your high school kids? Um, no, I do. Okay. I do 60 for my high school kids. Okay. Um, you know, to be honest with you, uh, you know, and I don't as much, I haven't like, uh, cause it's, it's a little bit harder with the high school kids to hold them as much accountable in this. I show them this, but we don't just run as much. If something was blatant and early on I do, but we, I didn't do this as much the whole year. Okay. Um, cause you know, it's just, it's a, it's a different, you know, the prep school level, it's just a different. Well, and it's a hard, this would be a hard thing to do for every yeah. game, but yeah. you could do it early. I mean, my we did third, it early on, I do it my first five games. That's, I, that would I, be my, that would be my advice to coaches that are listening. Cause I'll try to get a copy of this, but that would yeah. be my advice is do it early. You set the tone early because I'll, you know, I'll that, tell you right now we did this at Holy Cross. This isn't no lie. Um, it was the second game or third game of the year. And the kids at the end, you had to be above 70%, all that. We came in and coach read these separate stats off and we lost the game by about 15. And uh, he said, okay, everybody come on to get on the line. We were down to the, the recreational facility because of the main play. I'll never forget it. We had to do 138 sprints as a team, 138 <laughs> sprints. Ah. And I'm telling you right now, they were all timed. And if you didn't make it, we went again. It was like two hours of running. I'll never forget the next game. Guys were screaming at each other. Shot contest on the ball side. What are you doing? I am not running tomorrow. But <laughs> Because, by the way, we were running at 6 a.m. You know what I mean? Right. Like 6 a.m. Right. So, like, these guys had to get up at 5.30, and then they had to do 138 sprints. And then we had practice later. You know what I mean? Like, and, they so had to like, go to and they had to go to not an easy class. Yeah, yeah and I'll yeah. tell you right now, but I saw the mentality change of worrying about their offense, worrying about shot select, you know, all that. What they were worried about were blockouts, shot contests, ball pursuits. They started – and all of a sudden – win win man, we became man, the man. number one field goal percentage team in the that. country at 36 percent holy cross we played kentucky in the first round of the ncaa tournament and we tyshawn prince hit a you know half court shot that basically <laughs> we, we lost uh six seventy two to 68 but um you know so we were 16 seed they were one seed and i'll tell you the kids were like doing just the effort stats it was amazing right. it's awesome i've seen it work I, let's, that's awesome. Let's go back to let's go back yep, yep. to that summary thing, yep. and then I want to shoot some questions at you too. That no I problem, no problem. Here. Uh, so I think those are important. To, you know, the efforts yep. that you know. Then you always got to teach and practice the great teammate stuff. When guy takes a dive, yeah. You know, making sure your team's running the hole for him. They take a chance. Teach him the teammate. Like that's something I learned from Coach Moore and a couple other guys, Darren Horn. You know, like he was just all they're all about like when they do a hustle play, make sure you get excited as a coach. Right. And, your team gets excited because they you want to see them like positive reinforcement, like do that again. And you want to see the team who the kid who didn't do it say, Hey man, I better start doing that. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So I think those are the teammate stuff, you know, and we all know what that is up and down on the bench, high fives to your team, emotion at the right time. You know, like when a good play, there better be emotion for the right time, not for the wrong things. Right. You know, 
Um, handling winning correctly, dealing with losing correctly. Those are two big components, I think, that are important. Um, I think the discipline, you're always going to have individual and team discipline. Uh, so how are you handling that? Like, what are you doing? Like, we do 11s, we do 31s. Like, that's 11 is up and back in 11 seconds. 31 is a suicide. I give him 31 seconds to get it done. A 17 is uh, from the sideline to sideline. You got a minute and 10 seconds. You got to get 17 of them done in a minute and 10. And it kind of works out. You got to be really busting to get it done. Um, yeah. 17. So, you know, like how you handle your discipline when a guy do burpees, like 25 burpees, wall sits. Are you holding them accountable is what I would tell the young, especially exactly. the younger coaches. It's like, it doesn't matter what you make them do. Exactly. It's just, they got to know that you did this, you do this, we're moving yeah. on. You we're know, moving on but, now. Yeah, we yeah. got it. And you, you know, you're going to always come across it. Yeah. And then, you know, um, I think to teach the group, teach the group uh, mental toughness is the huge thing about that. Who show the leaders. I think that's Bill's huge too. Toughness is, you know, great. If you have a great book, book great oh, book. Talk yeah. about that's about the little things. And, you know, I think though that's huge. That's um, Duke. Yeah. Yeah. Energy and enthusiasm is a huge part of the winning habits. Making sure your staff brings it. If you don't have that fire, the guy, it's not worth having around. You know no. I mean? And the thing is, it's hard too. Cause sometimes I got to be picked up. I had a long day. I had a parent right. call. I had, 85,000 tests to grade, blah, blah, blah. And I'm walking into practice and I'm only at 80. You got to have somebody that's going to pick you. Let's all right, let's go. Like, exactly. it's not, you can't, it's, it's really hard every day, but it, I'll tell you. And I, and I, when I was, I was always the younger guy in most of the programs, but even when I was, even when I was a Quinnipiac, I was a little bit older and I had, a, I had to try and be that guy all the time. Right. You know, I was working for like a t older guy, Ralph Willard, Tom right. Moore. So right. Like, I, my, to give my worth, it was like, I wasn't like, you know, this ex NBA player or whatever. Right. I was like, I had to be that energy guy. You know what I mean? And that's a, I'll tell you, it's, it's can be embarrassing at times, but you got to be like that all the time. So the guys believe in you like, man, like this guy's always bringing it. You know what I right. mean? Right. And they can feed off it. It's like a, it's like a clap. It's like, it's like when they start clapping, it's, a, there's an energy that just comes with it. You can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can. Yeah, you can fake that a little bit, yes. And that translates every day, in, you know, into, like, your games. I, I've seen it happen. Team energy, you know, if you do that every day, your team's going to have energy on the court. Because you can say, hey, guys, we've been doing this every day, you know, and that's something you can hold your hat on. And then I think, finally, um, you know, like, you got to mirror what you do in practice. Right. Like style of play, you know what I mean? If you're an up-tempo team, you know, make sure, you, you know, you're working on that stuff, the pressing, you got to work on all those things. Like I mean, I would yeah. think if you want to be fast paced, you better work on fast pace. I mean, it exactly. seems simple, but people forget it. Um, go down and click on that. We'll, we'll go to one of your practice plans in a second. Go down to the game planning one. Sure. Let, uh, let, so is there anything specific you do for like game planning and practice planning and things like that? I mean, well, first how much I, time I, do you spend on scouts and stuff like that? I, 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 you know, I had a taper. I mean, when I was at division one, I, I mean, it was, it was, was your life. All we did. That was yeah. life. I mean, I watch, probably i don't know eight seven game films of the opponent like and then breaking them down each one of them to you know like breaking out all the plays breaking out all the defenses by the time i was done with one film i probably watched it a hundred times you know what i mean like right. you right. know and then i gotta go to the next game film and the next game film and the next game film so that's all we kind of did at the college level but at the high school level i know like you said the tiktok world these kids is going to be a short snippet so i give like three or four clips of each player they're going to be playing against Okay. Um, the top five or six players. And then their general offense, I'd watch like, you know, maybe three or four minutes of their plays. Okay. Um, and I'd show them about two, two or three minutes of either a man or in zone, just so they got a feel for them. Um, and that's it. So it was really, I don't know, maybe eight, nine minutes. And I talked to them, I show them a scout report you know, this one's a little bit when I, this one I was at, I think I was at division two when I showed this, but uh, the high school one's very similar, just like the same exact thing. You have the kid's name, there'd be a picture. I took the pictures out for this, but there'd right. be a picture beside it, you know, the kid's name, what he did, how much he have, you know, what he, you know, basically what he did. So, um, so, so, so for individuals, you're looking for tendencies. Exactly. Okay. You know, this kid's a shooter, you know, it always says at the end, like the keys contain, you know, for drives, you know, stay between him and the basket. That was, and then I quiz the kids before the game. Like I go, all right, well, I, I always have a board and I have the box, five boxes, five starters. And I'd be like, all right, number four, uh, Smith, uh, you know, and then the other point guard, that's his point guard for that team. Right. I look at my point guard, I said, tell me about him. You know what I mean? And he'd be like, oh, coach, you got to show clothes on him. He's a lefty. You know that? I'm like, good job. And right. if the kid didn't, I'd be like, someone else know? I said, right. you know, like, and that would embarrass the kid enough the next game that he'd know. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. 
because it's really about I, I i'm convinced high school is a lot about matchups it's a lot oh, about no. like it's you know <laughs> without a doubt you know, you know that, this kid's got because most of them have some weaknesses um uh, every one of them yeah you know, they all do to be honest with you there's not too right. many we don't right so that's what we do we do the offense characteristics game plan and all that and you know the keys to the game and then i have this basically scott report kind of like condensed on my board before pre Hey, Coach, I hope you're enjoying the podcast and um, enjoying what uh, Coach Sean is talking about in terms of practice planning. Uh, if you're looking for more information, if you're looking to become a better basketball coach, if you're looking for one-stop shop, come over and check us out at teachhoops.com, 14-day free trial. It's got everything. It's got the roadmap you need to become a better basketball coach. And let me help you. One-on-one -on -one calls, office hours, you name it, the community, um, more handouts, more videos, more things that you need to become a better basketball coach. So let me help you out. And let's get back to, uh, to Sean game up on the board and, and I have what do you do on your what do you do on your board in the pregame that's a great question i haven't asked me um, i put up this right here this this one um the uh i don't know if this is gonna come up there we go circle opportunity okay um and i have basically the five starters up on the board for them and then a couple of their subs and i write notes about them you know okay. like each guy yep so, we, so i first talk about all right here's the five stars let's go over it, guys you know, blah, 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 blah. And I say, okay, what does this team like to do offensively? They tell me, I'd be writing it down. Defensively, what do they play? Man, zone. They say it. I'm like, okay, now let's go over on our side. What's going to help us win this game? And I circle opportunity, coach. I'm like, all right, let's talk about that. Like, what's going to help us win? The ball pursuits. How many deflections do we need in this game? 40, right. coach. 40, coach. All right, we all go into the – how many guys are going to the glass? Three going to the glass, two back. All right. This game was sending four because they, you know, we can uh, afford to send four. You know, they'd all know at that point. You know, oh, we right. got shock and test, blockouts, charges. How many charges are we gonna get today? Someone gonna get me a charge? I joke around. Get me one or two. You know what I mean? Like, right. you know, we're gonna get five today, coach. You know, I try to get him into it, and then we leave one blank because I like each game there might be something that's more specific, like a uh, you know closeout or uh, you know rotations are important this game. Um, you know, so I write that in myself, and right. then I put down my my keys of like today you know like a you know whatever the key mantra is today you know okay i, like I love that keys. and again how long do you normally talk in pregame uh probably about 15 minutes you know okay. 15 minutes so i you know get them you know they go out there they stretch uh they they do a little bit of warm-up they come in for about 15 minutes i go over to them then they go back out for the next they usually go back out there for 20 with about 25 or 35 left in the clock they go out there with, and then they come back in at seven to get the hype going. They do the old, uh, you know, huddle hype, you know, like right. coming in, and, yep. you know, getting it bouncing going for yep. about 30 seconds and then back out for okay. the last four or five okay. minutes. So yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So good. You can take that off. Is there sure. anything else you want to talk about the practice planning? No, I mean, I, you know, I just think, you know, just the monthly ones, you see, you know, you got, everybody has their own monthly plan, but I think that's important to have. You got to map, you got to map it out. Grab one of your practices. Let's look at that real quick. And then I have a couple other questions. Sure. So, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, this is perfect. I can go to this one. That's fine. Yeah. This is one I used before, so. Okay, it doesn't uh, matter. Um, so tell me how you break a practice down. Um, you know, we start with, the, you know, the stretching, like we talked about, the dynamic right. stretch in the beginning. You know, the, um, you know we, this one was, um, we did, you know, proper form. You know what I mean? You yep. know, it was, we were talking about, because guys weren't doing proper form in the last one, so we do eight minutes of like that. Um, we did start it off the practice with running because the locker rooms were a mess. <laughs> um ah, so god that must be universal that must be <laughs> universal so in this practice we you know i rig it a line because you know they and then you know we went in and we picked it up and you know came back out and then we started the stretching so we kind of had it started with a little bit of negative but yet then that never happened again <laughs> right so you it know that was you fix it real quick yeah and then we do a dynamic drill that you know like i think gets guys going and we do this thing called four minute shooting um and it's like three basketballs and it's at the elbows. I don't know if you can see this, but, uh, here, here, let's, uh, let's stop sharing your screen for a second. We'll come back. Right. To this. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 So basically the entire team would be out there and it'd be, uh, two lines, uh, one side and the other side from the elbows, just okay. like this. Yeah. And, and, you know, so it'd be just like that, like that. And they have three basketballs, one, two, three on this yep. side. Okay. And they'd start, this line would come to the middle and they'd pass it to them. They'd take the shot. Okay. All right. And, and then they'd switch lines. 
just like that. And then the next ball would pass to the next guy coming in from the side. And they'd pass it back to the same side. The ball would go back to the same side. Okay. So it would always be getting passed from this side to that side. Yep. All right, for one minute. So for one minute, they'd be shooting. You know, this line would be the shooting line. This line would be a pass line for one minute. Okay. And they'd be shooting kind of like like a free throw line jumper. A little okay. bit over to the left, a little bit to the right. Just getting touches, quick passes. And when the, you've got to go offensive rebound, go get your rebound and then call a guy in the line's name out, you know, Billy, Billy. And then you, you go know, back to your, you go back, back to your here. same line then. Um, no, you go to the opposite line. Okay. So you get, you know, the other guy, you know, you pass it, you know what I mean? Yep. The, the, you get the offensive rebound, you get your offensive rebound, you pass it to the guy, yep. then you get to that end of the end, line. End of that line, okay. And then the other guy who, who uh, you know, pass it to you, Yep. You know, we'll go to the end of this line. You know okay. what I mean? And they just keep yep. on switching lines like that for one minute with three basketballs going. So, you know, and then you have the manager keeping a track of how many makes, makes, okay. makes, makes, you know, like that. So you'd be yelling. And your, your focus as a coach is making sure guys grab a rebound and talk and call the guy's name out and pivot on their foot and not travel and run with the basketball on the right. court. And, you know, the ball's getting whipped everywhere. Call the guy's name out the end of the line. Guy's hands are ready. Throw it to him. Get it in there. So we'll be doing that for about a minute. And then everybody would be aware because you have four minutes on the clock and it's running down. And then at three, min at, at three minutes, everybody switch. And all of a sudden, this line would move down to the block. This line would stay same spot, just like that. Okay. And this guy's would be down in the block area, right above the block. Not inside, but it'd be above the block right there. You make the pass from here to them. And right. then you have to make like a backboard jump, quick okay. backboard jump. And you'd be surprised how many misses guys make right from the block oh, just yeah. off the backboard. Quick. It's horrible. You know, it was quick passes. Next guy, hands up, ready, shot. Hands up. And then you'd be counting the misses on the front of the block. Two, seven, eight. Come okay. on, man. Focus, focus. Let's go, focus. And the bet, it's going quick, quick, quick. Yep. And all of a sudden, a minute would go down. They're still keeping track of the, the score. You know what I mean? You're going right now. Now you're at like 50, 60, 70, 71, 72. Now it's a minute, another one. Switch. Now the lines go back. Now the balls go over on this side, and they switch to the, the you know, this other side. direction. Yep. Now we're going the other direction for minute three, you know, yep. going, going, going. And then switch, minute four, this line moves down to down. the block, and they go for a minute here. Okay. And they got to get to 145. That's the minimum. And you can start changing the goal. It right. might be 150. Do hey, they get 145 early in the season? No, <laughs> like, okay. uh, and then we'd make them run, like, you know, to be honest with you. At first, I'd let them learn to drill, and then I'd be, all right, you know, what's our minimum? And, you know, your minimum might be, depending on how good a shooting team you are, might be 112, 115. Right. Like you do it two or three times without, a, like, not telling them what the day. Then you say, all right, listen, three times we've done it, we've gotten 115 and 118. Our right. goal is, I'm not going below 115. So right. if we go below 115, Every, we're running a sprint for everyone below 115. Okay. You know, and then all of a sudden for the whole rest of the year, there's your standard, 115 right. is your standard. Right. And then as a coach, now they start killing it every time you get them going. They're like, all right, I'm moving it up to 120, guys. And you start right. raising the back level. When we okay. were at Holy Pro, uh, I mean, at Quinnipiac, we were doing 160. Okay. You know, like and do you do different shots? Or you do only those four steps? You already do, we do those, those four quick. It's just, it's about ball movement. It's not about okay. really the shots, it's Got about it. talking communicate quick passes hands okay. ready getting their minds into like if, you, if you're not awake and you're not and, and everybody at the end of the line has to be clapping if you don't have a ball you got to clap so okay. if you're not into it like you might get a ball off the head you might get you know what i mean like you're not ready the coach is screaming at you get your hands up ready shot right. ready turn you know so now like it's just a drill to get everyone into practice right away simple drill quick shooting four minute time with a goal everybody's going you know what I mean? I love that. I love uh, yeah, that. Yeah, four minutes. I, I kind of like it. And, you know, we've always that it gets our practices really. And it gets coming. it moving. Okay, let's go back to the shared screen here. Um, yeah. Uh, share. Yeah. There we go. All right. Um, you know, then we do the old three on three on a layup. Um, okay. which, you know, everybody does. You know, I, you know, we we all know that one, right? You know, just yep. three, uh, three, three man weave. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Layup. Um, and then, um, the three, this, oh, I'm sorry, three on a layup. This is three on a layup. So this is basically, uh, I'm going to come back out of that. I'll show you. Okay. Uh, stop, yeah. All right, here we go. All right, so this is how this drill works. You'd have three guys, a layup line right there. We'd have uh, and a rebounding line right here. And then there'd be everybody would fill in those three spots. There's the three spots on the court. Okay. Okay. 
So now what would happen was this guy would go for his uh, left-handed layup coming right now. Okay. Right? He'd make the layup. And then as he made the layup, he takes off down the court. Okay. He goes. The, the big man steps on the court, gets the ball out of the net, goes out of bounds. And then the, the point guard who's here, he goes to ask to the sideline, yep. calls for an outlet. You know what I mean? Yep. Outlet, ball, ball, ball. This guy has to clear the paint here, clear the paint, and he's got to throw an outlet pass to the point guard. The point okay. guard has his ass to the sideline so he can, yep. doesn't get, you know, like the old ass to the, you know, yep. if he turns and catches, it's going to be a charge. Yep. You know what I mean? So you don't want that. So the key teacher you're talking about, calling for the outlet point guard off the sideline, but, you know, a good enough so you could turn either baseline, a sideline or middle. Right. So now he's got to be ass to the sideline. You make that pass to him here. He turns and goes and makes a chest pass, you know, up the court, snap pass up to the court for this guy going for the layup. The big man who made the outlet has to come down and get the rebound out of the net. Okay. Yep. So you've got a three man moving at, at the same time. You get the point guard, you get the layup guy. So the layup guy goes, yes. takes the shot, boom, takes off, oh. outlet, snap, bang, here. Here. That's okay. three on O layup. And, you know, boy, he comes down. Then the next group comes three guys going, 3-0 and okay. layup, 3-0 and layup. Yep. And it just really teaches pushing the ball up the court, outlet, the side, rebound. Like that. You know what I mean? It really yep. gets you going. And then you transfer that, the same exact thing. Now when they're really good with three, and they come back the other way, 3-0 right. layup, coming back yep. the other way to your right hand, you know, left yep. hand. You, come, you know, when we're all down here now, we just go back the other way. And now after 3-0 on layup, we do 3-0 on post pass. And the 3-0 on post pass, is very similar, same exact situation. You know, the guy goes for the layup here. He right. Takes, you know, makes a layup, takes off down the court, yep. going down the court. Big man, the same exact thing, takes out of bounds, outlet, same exact thing here. Now this is three on post pass. So now you throw it up the court, and instead of going for a layup, you drag dribble it down to right. the corner and come back. Big man, and your big rim man's rim trailing. Rim, yeah. Rim, yeah. To rim to rim, rim to rim. He posts up. These two guys are here. And now you got to make an entry pass to the post, pass, you know, fake high, pass around low. A, your assistant coach is standing out here with a basketball right yep. here. Yep. You make the post. This post big man makes his post move. The coach passes it out to one of these players, and then he penetrates and kicks out for a shot. I so, like that. Penetrate, kick out. That, penetrate, that trailer big thing is so hard for them to do. Oh, I know. And Isn't you know, it? That's a, it's a tough – I'll tell you, we, uh, you know, we work on that a lot. And then when we have a coach stand here and as the big's coming down, we bump him with a pad. And he's yeah. got to skin off. You know what I mean? And catch him with the post. And, the, the, and that, I'm telling you, you might run this drill for a month and they still won't be good. I mean, it just takes uh, so long for that trailing big. Oh, I know. Because I, I don't know if they the don't big, look. Not clearing that paint, catching it. And they get the mentality of sprinting. That's why they've got to get the ball out of the net. Sprint the court. You know, like the same exact thing, like post up. I want our bigs trying to beat the other big down. The right, court. and they don't look – I mean, I think I, part of that summer basketball, I hate to say it, but oh. the game is so wide that they don't look for those guys going down unless it's going to be a tomahawk dunk. They never look for them coming down the lane anymore. It is, I'll tell you right now, I hate to say it, but there's, there's limited amount of big men in the country anymore. We did a – I did a uh, – Nep- I ran a NEPSAC tournament, which is – all the NEPSAC schools in New England came to my gym this past summer for the college coaches. There was 200 college coaches across the country, high level division one. Right. It was a sanctioned event. It was one of the only sanctioned ones in the summer. And um, so we said, Hey, what are we going to do for these guys? Man, they they want to see him play. I, they also got to do a breakdown a little bit. So let's break them down to three groups, post player, wing and point guard. So I said, all right, guys, get them all together. I said, all right, listen, anybody who's a point guard, go to court one, uh, you know, wing, go to court two. Post player, go to court three. You guys all set? Now, there was 250 kids. I mean, let me guess. Let me guess. Let me guess. Less than 10 bigs. Five went over to court three. <laughs> Five out of 250 went over to the big man section. It was you unbelievable. Know, well, part of, and I'm telling you, part of that is college. Part of that's the NBA. Like, they're looking for Giannis. They're looking for, like, long, lanky, Michael, Magic Johnson kind of. They're not looking for bigs anymore. No, the Shaquille O'Neal's of the world are gone. It's unbelievable. I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I was going over to the wings. I'm like, why don't you go over to just to get seen? There's college coaches on that court. Like, right. <laughs> you're, you're in a line with like 60, 70 other dudes. Why don't I go over there with the one five? I'd, I'd be like the six foot kid down there with the post. It's like, <laughs> look at me. Look at me. <laughs> exactly. So, but you know, I know it's just, it's hard to get those bigs, but if you can get a big to run the court and all that and, 
post. All right, let's go. Let's let's do the let's do the end of it in like three minutes because I have oh. a couple questions I want to ask you and I don't yep. want to keep you all yep. night here. Yeah, no problem. Um, share screen back. I mean, I can talk basketball all night, but there you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, these are continu- so, you know, three on two continuous drill, two teams, which I yep. think is a fun drill. Um, you know, that's a, it's a continuous drill where you have it's basically teaching a three on two and just going up and back continuous three on twos. Yeah, um, that's a good one. Um, we do broke it off. Did some free throws. Yep. Um, you know, if you if you missed, you had a penalty. Like you do a one on one. I always teach our guys to take two free throws. You know, after you take the first one, step off the line, take the second one, and then it's a one on one. If you miss the first, you got to do something. You know, like double. If right. You miss the second, you only got it. Like so, we we do twenty. So if you do, you know, uh, if you miss the first, you do twenty burpees. If you miss the second, you only do ten burpees. Right. So there's always a penalty on the free throws. Teaching them like it means something, so that's not messing around. So we always may take the free throws, and that's when they get their water. After you take two one and ones, you can go get a water, and okay. we kind of give them their breaks. So there are always some water breaks in the free throws. And we go over shell drill. You know, teaching a shell drill, typical across the country, everybody works yep. on a shell. Um, strong, weak side cutters, you know that. Then we worked on switching ball screens during this practice. You know, which is always important. What are you going to do? Switch ball screens. How are you going to play a ball screen? I, I'm telling and, you, ball screens are the one thing that literally you don't. You we're know. high school coaches. We How do you have, play? Do you play? The, what do you play the ball screen? I I I tend to I double the ball screen a lot, especially up high because there's not a lot. I mean, and we're playing. I mean, consistently there's a handful of D1 guys in our league. The problem yeah. is, I got to jump. I mean, otherwise you're going to turn the corner, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. they don't. Kids don't pass out of that well. That's right. my theory is we're going to rotate fast enough that if yep. I come at you now, don't get me wrong. We were hedging. We were doing some other stuff late in the season, yep. but I'm going to double you at least half. I'm going to think, make you think that we're coming. You, you said that ball screen, we're doubling the ball. I mean, go ahead and flare and roll. The right. guy that has the ball is not going to get it to you half the time. Exactly. Uh, Especially the high school level. Yeah. We've been, that, we've been icing it. And I, you know, I've been trying to get that ice down to these guys, but it's, you know, if you don't, if you, when you commit to it, if one of the things screw up, you get really messed yeah, up. Yeah, and, and, the, and, the, and here's the problem is we don't have the time to yeah. practice. I mean, if I'd run that, I'd run all sorts of different types of things if I could spend, <laughs> you yeah. know, the time to teach them. Practice it, yeah. yeah we're going to do this for this team. We're going to do this for this team. Yep. But it's like we don't have time. I mean, if I had them all year round, even if I could only see them for a couple hours in the fall and the spring, I could do all that. But it's like we get shut down, you know, I don't know. I know it's, it's very hard. They limit. The, I think they're trying to give it more back to the high school coaches lately. The NCA is kind of like you know well, they're giving us you know a little I, bit. I have I have several things. I have several things I'm gonna I'm gonna fight for before I get done with this thing. One is the jump ball should go away. It's a stupid thing. Why do we? The officials can't even throw the ball. No, the officials mess it up every time. Let's let's just let's just give the visiting team the ball and do alternating possession. That's my first thing. <laughs> it's stupid. It's just a dumb thing. And yeah. and um. What, what were we just talking about? You run a, uh, you run a tap play? I, I run a tap play. Uh, well, we do run a tap play. We've been burned on a tap play, too. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, go ahead. Keep going, Coach. I don't – I mean – um, You know, then, basically, then we just do – we had this practice. We had conditioning for four minutes because sometimes we only have two baskets. So, you know, like, because we have to – you share the court with, right. you know, like the women's, the other right. JV. So, if I don't have my six hoops, then I do conditioning, you know what I mean, uh, stations. Right. And have you know four guys are taking free throws, and then we rotate. You know, like those four guys come free throws, the other guys are in conditioning. So you kind of get your conditioning in with the water because we try okay. to be a press, you know, pressing team. Then I work work on press. We work on press break during this practice and zone offense yep. um, versus the two three and the one three one. Um, we do this drill called Michigan State, which is you know I got from Michigan State. Tom is a phenomenal drill. Basically, you start off two on one. Um, you know, there's one you two teams. Yep. You know, you know white and blue. Blues down the other end. He sends one sends one guy out on defense. Okay. White team comes down with two guys. Okay. They got the ball. They're on yep. offense. So now it's a two on one. Right. You're going down the court two on one. Play score. Yep. Now we got it. We're up two nothing to white. We get back in a tandem because two guys on the blue come out. Now it's a three on two. two. Okay. Three on two coming back. Then now it's three blue guys versus two white. They got to make the stop. Yep. They say they score. Now it's two to two. Yeah. Now the white team sends out four. Four. I mean, you know, yeah. now two other guys come on. Now it's a four on three. Right. Now you go down, play the four on three, scramble and triangle, how to play D. All of a sudden the shot goes up. We make it. We're up six to four. They send two more guys on. Now it's a five on four going back. We're doing the box. One guy's open. Finally score. Now it's six to six. Now it's a five on five, the final drill. I love that. 
awesome drill. Teams love it because it's a score. It's like, you know, who's going to be You're active, too. You're active, yeah. Yeah, it's two on one, three on two, all the things that happen in practice. Phenomenal drill. Got that from Tom Izzo. And, uh, you know, you know, just we do it. All, we did it when I was at Holy Cross. Awesome. We did it when I was at Quinnipiac. We did it when I was at Western Kentucky. We did it when I was sailing everywhere. Everywhere I've gone, I've done it. It's, it's an awesome drill. Kids love it. Um, and then we, we, do, we did some defensive t- uh, conditioning. I always believe that you got to teach kids to stay in stance. And so we do this slide run drill. So basically that when I said defensive conditioning, it's like you start in a the corner, they slide out to the elbow, then they sprint. Then they slide to the other elbow, then they sprint to the corner. Then they're sliding the whole baseline. Same thing, slide, run, slide, run, all the way up. And the problem is, the problem is the kids, um, yeah, kids want to stand up so much. Oh. Oh. And we teach them slow, you know, like board, you know, don't like come up, don't know bunny hopping, try and teach that technique of not clicking your heels, you know, short, choppy steps, you know, board between your legs, six inches, you know, all that kind of stuff. And that's where you can really teach that. And it's also working on the conditioning of uh, staying in the stance. Um, so we talked about that, get him some water. And then this, this day was a scout day. So we were talking 15 minutes about the other team Damn. and what girls they did. And then we go through last 10 minutes, all our plays, you know, okay. dry yep. and, uh, you know, side out of bounds on teeth out of bounds. And then we do our post. And how do you do, I see on the bottom, you've got groups. Do you make them competitive and equal? Do you put your starting five together? How do you do that? I, it, you know, varies earlier in the season. We do it. Um, to be honest with you, we break them off like evenly. And then later on, I kind of want my five starters kind of working. I want the other kids to be the scout team. And I want those kids to kind of like wish they were a starter and bust right. their ass to try and get the starting spot. Yeah. So I kind of, as, as the season progresses, we kind of like have the top group and the second group. And I kind of yeah. okay. them green and white, you know. Differentiate. Uh, um, so, okay, so you can, let's share the screen here. Do you, um, yeah. if you could only do three things at practice, what would you do? Oof. Three, three, three things in practice. Um, I guess it would be uh, – I would have to do offensively. We'd be doing, a lot, you know, uh, a lot of shooting. So okay. I think that would be important. And I, I would be really working on shell. I think your defensive – your half court – every you have to – in order to win, you got to be able to stop someone in the half court, I think. You know what I mean? You do. So, you got to. So, I'd, be, I'd probably work on shell – I think in order to win also on the other end, you got to make shots. I don't think enough guys work on shooting like game shots, not like just stand still, like jack them up, like, you know, like time and score, like game shooting drills that like really put pressure on kids and like, right. you, got, you know, elevate and make a shot like yes. under pressure and like put them as much as you can in that. So I'd be doing competitive shooting drills, probably shell. Um, and then since I'm a pressing coach i've always you know been pressing later i'd work on some kind of press, press you know like whatever it is the you know diamond or you know black or you know what hey coach hope you enjoyed the video um let me know how we can help make sure you join ttubes.com up above and down below um it is a great resource it's a community it's mentoring for me one-on-one calls office hours you'll get my personal email address lots of resources tons of resources thousands of resources look to, to check out uh, I've been there. I've experienced everything you have, won lots of championships, but I want to help you do the same thing. So let me help you. Go over and check it out, teachhoops.com.